I'm not entirely sure I need this. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I, honestly, uh, I, I, I came to this convention because the organizers reached out to me and asked me to. And it's been a while. Um, this has been uh, tremendously exciting uh, being here and meeting a whole bunch of new people. I love Star Wars fans. Uh, and I hope this is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for being here. We all appreciate it, I'm sure. My pleasure. <laughs> so I have a few questions ready for you here. Um, first one, can you tell us about how you became involved with writing the Star Wars Legends novels? Well, um, I'll see if I can give you the short version. <laughs> uh, I, I was offered a slot in the New Jedi Corps, which was the, uh, the big project from Del Rey when we took over the franchise, novel rights from Phantom. And <clears throat> I wasn't going to do it. Uh, I didn't do tie-in fiction in these days. I, I published three novels of my own to excellent reviews, but not a great deal of sales. And they offered me Star Wars, and I thought, yeah, what am I going to, am I, am I, am I, do I have to have the Solo Twins kidnapped again? Seriously, <laughs> 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 sure, I mean, literally, I, I literally, and, and uh, Shelby Shapiro uh, said, said, oh, no, 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 it's not going to be anything like that. <laughs> it's it's going to be a completely new uh, story based on the, the old continuity. We're, we're trying to avoid retreading any of the sort of classic plot lines. I said, all right, I'll think about it. And uh, while I was thinking about it, I ended up at uh, <clears throat> uh, Gen Con, which in those days, I, I think was still in Lake Geneva. And uh, I was there with uh, Bob Salvatore, who wrote Vector Prime, and Mike Stackpole, who wrote Onslaught, the first two books of the NJO, which mine was 13. And these are both guys that I had known for a little bit and, and you know, admired. I like their work. I like them as people, and we got to talking about it. Uh, one of them had heard a rumor that, that I had been offered a slot in the NJO, because they were both already on board. And I said, yeah, I'm just not sure I'm gonna do it, because, because it's, not, it's, not my, it's not my story. And, and I, it was Mike, I think, who, who said, said, listen, I don't know what the print run, first print run of your last book was, but the first print run of your next book could be 250,000 copies. <laughs> and I said, oh, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and that, that's it. That's how I got started. And, and it was because of Trader that they offered me Chatterpoint, because they wanted to do a, a dark horrors of war kind of story for the Clone Wars. And, and because they thought I understood the dark side, and that's how I got uh, Revenge of the Sith. I mean, you know, the, the, two, the two previous authors in the previous trilogy much more famous than I <laughs> ever to this day. Uh, Terry Brooks, for Christ's sake, and, and R. A. Salvatore, right? And then there's me. <laughs> um, but they, they thought that, that I had, because of Shadowport, they thought I had the right touch for that kind of, kind of tragedy. And, and apparently, since you're all here, it worked out okay. <laughs> Star Wars hardcover. It was my first hardcover. I was a paperback guy. And, and so I had this, I, I came up with this whole, uh, you know, complicated fighting smuggler plot to, in, in like Nar Shaddaa, the in the depths of Nar Shaddaa, and the hot gambling syndicate, and da 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 da. Uh, stuff based uh, largely on uh, uh, John Ostrom's work for Darkness. It's a, did some base wing and comics and stuff like that. So, so I had I had Mace, I had, I had Dashing Pilot, I had Fussy Drug, I had 
I mean, I had I had the whole nine yards and the whole plot line, and and I sent it in, and, and uh, I got a call back from Shelley and said, "No, nah, this is not this is not what we want from you." And I said, "What do you mean?" And, and she said, "Well, we we're we're looking for something for the Clone Wars that's going to have more of the vibe of of you know Cold Mountain all the way on the Western Front." And I said, "Have you read Cold Mountain?" And all quiet on the <laughs> Both of those books share a common, a specific common trope, which is that the main character is killed at the end. <laughs> Sorry for the spoilers. Um, and you know, Mace Windu. Yeah, and I'm like, how how it's, how do you expect him to pull that off? And they said, I said, I don't know. Come up with something. And, and a couple of days later, in desperation, um, I got this idea. I called up Shelley and said, what if I were to do Apocalypse Now with Jedi? And she said, oh, that sounds good. <laughs> and, she, and she ran it up to Bella Bell and wrote, yeah, do that. I didn't even, I didn't even submit an album. Oh. That was my album. Apocalypse <laughs> <laughs> Now with Jedi. And uh, uh, the, only, the only real, and I, I think I fulfilled that largely. Uh, except that me being me, uh, it was not so much Apocalypse Now, it's actually what Apocalypse Now was based on, which is Heart of Darkness, because Joseph Conrad is one of my heroes. So uh, <clears throat> so it is It is not really Apocalypse Now with Jack. It's really actually Adventure of Heart of Darkness with Jack. Uh, and, but other than that, it was really, I was... Uh, there wasn't that much known about Mace in those days. So I was strip mining everything I could find, not just, not just the sweet place and the, and, um, the other stuff, but you know, the, the Dark Horse comics and, and anything that would, that would give me like a starting point. And it was, uh, there, there was a line in Emissaries to Mount Stare where Mace is talking about uh, the grasshopper herds um, on his home planet, and because they're they're they, they're fighting mutated act dogs in an arena, it's, it's you know comic book thing, and so I using the grasshopper herds and act dogs both from already canonically from his home planet, I I sort of built the rest of the the Cornet culture uh, just just. Off that. And I think that, uh, yeah, I think the end, that was, that was, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. And the rest was just really uh, an attempt to uh, keep things moving but have each, each bit, each action, action sequence be a little bit more dramatic than the one before. Right? So, so, so it works in beats. That go up to this, you know, the giant climactic battle that covers about the last two and a half chapters. And so I was, I was going for that, that kind of vibe. But other than that, it was really. Um, if you take out the battles, yeah, it's, it's hard to cover. So that, that's my shadow point story. Oh uh, yeah, sorry, you know, get started. So again, basing off of Heart of Darkness, what, what makes you think that? Mace and you know his attack on Eva, the best two characters of the Jedi were to tell that story. Like anything about their personalities or their relationship that was That's interesting. Um, I I am again there there was very little known about uh, Mace, but there was even less known about Death. Uh, she was <clears throat> she was a character from the comics as well. And I think described only in, in her one or two appearances as a, 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 a chelactin adept, you know, with a, she had a couple of gems in the set in her forehead or something. Honestly, it's been 25 years since I wrote that book, so. Um, <laughs> uh, so a lot of their relationship was based on, uh, you know, just like Samuel Jackson's vibe as an actor. And, and this, uh, this lightsaber style that he supposedly had created, that 
this, uh, they, I, I guess they call it, they now call it Juyo, but in those days they called it Papa. This is again something they got from most of the thing. Um, now, I, I, I'm, I'm a, a nearly lifelong student of the martial arts. Whenever I have been healthy enough to train, I train. I'm, I'm, I've done literally a dozen different martial arts. And the whole concept of lightsaber styles, let me tell you, <laughs> it's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not how, that's not how fighting actually works. <laughs> but it's canonical. Right, so 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 he's supposed to be, he was supposed to be master of super deadly style, and so I got to basically decide how that style worked in uh, you know in detail, and you know since Deppa was again canonically the only other Jedi to have to have mastered the style, then you know you start to based on the the kind of it's the love of combat. That is the love of victory that, that drives that, that style. It's, you know, it's fairly aggressive, multiple attacks over one defense, right? Um, and so, you know, it's just uh, the, the, the whole, their whole relationship kind of came out of that, this sort of weird father daughter uh, teacher student kind of thing because, you know, they're both separated from all of their blood relatives. They're they don't have families, the Jedi don't have family, and so, and, and, that, and I mean, that's, it, it just kind of grew out of the details that were necessary to keep it consistent with the, with the established story. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite part from, uh, a favorite scene or quote from Jedi Point? My, um, probably my favorite scene from Shadow Point is, <clears throat> is actually the, uh, it's like chapter two, um, it's the interrogation between the Lord's gift and, and Mace, mm -hmm. where, the, you know, uh, if you haven't read the book, the, it's a planetary administrator, um, you know, uh, sympathetic to the, the techno union, whatever, because they pay more. And, uh, and it's just a character that I, I really enjoyed writing, and the Mace's gradual realization of just how dangerous this insignificant looking guy really is it happens to be close to that scene. And then it's confirmed in the action sequence that follows. Um, yeah, I, 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 when I have reread that, I, I, I get a little smile. <laughs> I like that stuff. Uh, which of your Star Wars films did you enjoy writing the most? True. Sure. <laughs> Really knowing what her game really is. 
right? Because Jason doesn't know. So I decided I wasn't gonna let the readers know either. And the whole, uh, um, the way I pitched that story was, what if Jason is already attacking, he's being tortured, and she comes in as a rescuer, but what she says to him is not, you know, I'm Luke Skywalker, I'm being rescued. What she says to him is, everything I tell you is a lie. Every question I ask is a trick. You will find no truth in me. And so, so Jason did, that let me have Jason's focus on, be on, what is she trying to do to me? Not just surviving it, but trying to understand why she's doing it. And I also knew that I was going to get to have a force using character to say, there's no such thing as the dark side. <laughs> I knew I was going to get to do that. And I knew I was going to get to do the, the only dark side you need to worry about, Jason Solo, is the one inside you. And I knew. It was going to be a shit storm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was so excited. I, uh, one of my best friends at the time was an even bigger Star Wars geek than me. And when I got back from the story conference, I, was, I, I, I went over to his house. It was like 10 o'clock at night. And I was like, I'm going to I'm going to fuck with these people like they've never been fucked <laughs> Uh, it, and and because of that, because the um, it was the, the original title of that book was Underworld, which they nixed because I think it was a Quinlan Voss arc in uh, in the Dark Horse comics when it was going by that name. They, they they preempted my name, but the the whole Underworld it was the story was plotted as a kind of classical Greek mythology journey through the Underworld, right? Stations of the Underworld returning to the, the whole Joseph Campbell. Thing. So I had it. I had the whole thing, and it was a, it's a bottle story, right? It's, it's only about the characters in there, the wider war that was going on around them, not an issue. So I didn't have to, I didn't have to coordinate with anybody. I, I, I told them what the beginning was gonna be, what the end was gonna be, and I just did it. Mm -hmm. And I did the whole thing, and it was, a, it was actually the last book of my career that I turned in by the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really fun. I've never had that much fun before. No, no, no. So, there you go. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I assume the answer to my question is going to be that, but if, aside from Revenge of the Sith, are there any of your books that you'd like to have adapted into a live action? Oh, no, 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 no. Or not? Uh, no, uh, Shadow Fire. Yeah. Uh, if they were going to adapt into, into a live action, or even a campaign. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have a car with a rule. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that, you know. Uh, Trigger, Trigger, I don't think, uh, works without the, without the context of the new Jedi. I mean, I, I know there, there are some people I know who have just read that because they were, they were fans of mine, not NGO fans. And they, they still like it, but I, I feel like without that context, it's not, it's not that really that powerful a story. If you don't, if you don't, if you didn't know Anakin and watch what happened to him in Star Wars, yeah. If if you didn't know that, you don't know where where Jason is at the beginning of this book. Because I don't, I don't do backstory. You know, if I can avoid it, I, I hate exposition. I hate it. I all I all I, I try never to tell people anything more than what they need to know to understand. So, Trigger, yeah, favorite Star Wars book, fun to write, but I don't think it would work that way <clears throat> as a, in an adaptation. Yeah. And also, there's a lot more ass kicking in the chat. It's very graphic, but that's one of my favorite parts about it, is how I'm really graphic it is. That's, that's, that's literally what they asked me for. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah they're going to take out the fetal wasp scene. Oh my God. I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> Come on. And they said, okay, well, just why, why don't you just end it before he destroys the brain with his lightsaber? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I 
so he, so in that scene, they, you, he tells him what he's going to do, and then it's just it makes you know, turns and went to work or something. It's the <laughs> job. That, but that was the that was the only thing that they thought was over the top. It was the only sequence that I had to, that I had to sort of <clears throat> struggle. <laughs> Um, are there any parts of your novelization of Revenge of the Sith that you would have had, liked to have included in the movie? Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, and, and a lot of them are based on uh, stuff that uh, Mr. Lucas shot but didn't actually put in the film. But, uh, there, there are sequences in the book that, they're in the book because there, these were scenes in the shooting script, which is what I was working on. Uh, and some of those. I was like, I kind of like a lot of the political stuff. Um, doesn't really show up in the movie, but it was all there in the screen. Um, actually, it's maybe heresy, but when, when, when I read that, that shooting script the first time, um, I, I called up Shelley Shapiro. She was you know, the Star Wars editor in, in New York. And I said, you know, if what I'm seeing on this on the page here, this is what this movie is going to be. This is going to be the greatest freaking Star Wars film ever. This is this is going to this is going to blow away the Empire Strikes Back. It's, it was, I mean, the script. I just, it, you can. It, I mean, it's for sale. You can read it. Um, I, I I like it. I like it better than uh, the final version because there's just there's more. There was more in it. And uh, yeah, but you know. <laughs> Maybe the. Uh, I don't know. I kind of I can't really think. Maybe the the sequence between uh, uh, Obi Wan and Padme in the book, where Obi Wan is letting Padme know that he knows that they're in love and secretly married, but he can't say it out loud because you know he's a Jedi. She realizes <clears throat> uh, what is going on. And it's, it's right before she leaves to try to go to Mustafar and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, that just that that just that scene, that little there's a there's just in, in the book, it's just a little scene uh, where he's looking for Anakin. He, Anakin's in trouble. He doesn't know exactly what's going on. She's, as he's leaving, she's like, she's like, you know, you love him too. And Obi-Wan just turns and says, please do what you can for him, and walks out. And it, yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen something like that. I would have liked to have seen that relationship between Obi-Wan and Pat. But, but you know, it's already two and a half hours long. <laughs> you know, and, and also, Scenes like that, you can get away with because a, a book doesn't have to keep your eyes locked on it for the entire runtime. You know what I mean? The, the the quiet scenes, yeah, a lot of the quiet scenes in my stuff, the ones I like the best, it, it, my my version, um, because they you just couldn't put those on screen. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, you could, but it would be a, it would be a very different movie. Not necessarily that. Yeah, just my opinion. Yeah, like I, I would have liked to see the uh, the exchange between Dooku and Palpatine before Obi Wan oh, came yeah. in. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I, I I'm really I'm very fond of uh, <clears throat> my particular version of Dooku. I had a lot of fun writing the stuff from his point of view. Um, and uh, I'm going to be on a panel later on in this time with uh, Sean Stewart who is largely responsible for my take on Duke. He, he wrote a novel, a uh, Clone Wars novel called Yoda Dark Ronde, <clears throat> that involves, if I recall correctly, it involves a young Duke, like 12-year-old Duke in training at the Jedi Academy. And his, Stewart's uh, education of this young developing entitled sociopath was so evocative for me. I'm like, I'm like, okay, that's 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 the 
that's it. That's how I'm going. I'm, I'm going to take that and I'm going to run with that for his whole sequence and so forth. Which, you know, in the screenplay, he has a bigger part in the, in the original shooting script. There's, there's more about that. Um, the, again, artistic choice on Mr. Lucas's part to make that, you know, the first 10 or 15 minutes of the screenplay is the first third. It's 30% of that. His movie, he, he, he knew what he wanted out of it. Wasn't the same thing I wanted out of it, but that's inevitable for me. Yeah, it's interesting that he, that, you know, after reading that, that part stuff out, he was, he was very, it, it, it gives me a very, a very different perception of, of his personality as he was. And it's funny you use that word sociopath, because when I was reading it, I thought the same thing. I was like, oh my God, he's a sociopath. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, well yeah, I mean, if, and again, I think this is something I borrowed from Sean, um, that the bit about him. Uh, categorizing other people. They're, they're not people to him. They're, they are assets or threats or irrelevant. There's no other category. Yeah, that was fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I may have stolen that from him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, looking back now, um, are there any parts of any of your novels that you would have liked to have written differently? Whether it's a character, their personality, a different sequence, anything you would have changed at all? In, the, in, in Star Wars? Mm -hmm. um, well, I will say that, uh, now the, the answer is generally no, um, even though I would do it differently if I were doing it now. Um, what I was doing then was literally the absolute best I could do then. And I, I kind of, I'm willing to let it stand. I, I'm, I, I'm sort of the opposite of Mr. Lucas in that way. He loves to tinker with <laughs> stuff he's already done. Me, I, I'd rather do something new and just let, let whatever I think are the flaws stand because the, the stuff that I don't like about my books, stuff that I have not liked about my books, is often something that somebody is, comes up to me in a comment or writes me a letter or something. They go, this, this right here, that just really spoke to me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, the, the thing is that you never know. What, I'm, I'm sorry, are we, are we running out of time? Oh, thank you. I don't have glasses. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, okay, uh, who's your favorite Star Wars character and why? <gasps> oh, Obi-Wan. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, you can't read Revenge of the Sith without realizing. It, it is largely a fallibilization of that character in many ways. I mean, he is, he, he is literally described by the author as the ultimate Jedi in that narrative. Um, yeah, I, I, I just dig it. I, I, I love Alan Guinness' Obi Wan, but I think, I think uh, McGregor's is, is, is tremendous. I think mm -hmm. he did a great job. And uh, uh, the, the thing about, the thing about Obi Wan. Is not really true of like Yoda, is that Obi Wan fundamentally is a deeply kind person. It's deeply kind, and that that is kind of that's almost that's like Luke's superpower, right? I mean, the, Luke's superpower is that he cares about everything right? and he wants to save them. I 
general or the actual lines, but it's, it's just the, it, it is one of those sequences in there that this is Obi-Wan Kenobi right now. <clears throat> There's one there where it's just describing him giving himself to the Force, and that's how he, when he, 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 he opens himself up, becomes a window into the Force, so it's like, and, you know, and it's, it is from, I guess, a, a literary criticism standpoint, it's completely purple and over the freaking top, but it works for me, it works for me when I read it, you know, when I reread it, I'm, I, I read that and I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We got what ten minutes left? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, let, let's let's start in front. I talked to you earlier, so how about you? You write a lot of characters who have to deal with their inner darkness. Right. So I was wondering, have you ever thought about writing a story about Mara Gay, who is kind of like a character who went from being an assassin to a jail at night? Uh, I'm sorry. Could you give the name again? Mara Gay. Mara. Mara Gay. Oh, 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 right, right, right. Um, uh, no, uh, I, I um, although I, I did do a, an homage to Mark in Blue Skywalker Shadows. Yeah, it doesn't like red. Yeah, it doesn't like red. <laughs> <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't like bossy redheads. That was, that was literally a direct Mark reference. Uh, 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 no, I, um, I, 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 I was never that interested in that part of the story. Uh, that, that, and that's literally the only reason. If if you're interested in assassins who try to be better, you might look at my non-Star Wars stuff because that's what the main character is. So there you go. Um, uh, yes. Do I have strong feelings? Yes. Can I tell you what they are? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, and, and I, but I will, I will explain to you the reason for this. This is, this is, this is actually a, a, a conscious policy that I inculcated because I used to spend a lot of time on theforce.net, um, especially during the MJO, uh, just talking with the fans and stuff, just kind of them, seeing what they thought. And a lot of people would ask me, about trade because it was very controversial in the family. Um, and they would ask me things, and I said, and I, and I would say, you know, they would ask me, does this mean this? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm not going to tell you <laughs> what I meant by that because it's not my story. It's actually your story, right? The, the only the only story that you that you encounter is the one that happens inside your head when you read these little black marks on the page, right? My opinion about what something means in here does not count for more than yours. It doesn't. It, 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 I, I, I literally believe this. This is an article of faith for me, that what a story means, anything in a story, is what it means to you personally when you're reading it. Right? So I figure if I tell people what I thought I was trying to say, they, they might mistake that for the truth. Right? But it's not. It is what I was trying to say, but because of my privileged position with my name on that, the, uh, the cover, I think that people would give my opinion on this entirely too much weight. Because I, because literally, I don't know better than you. <laughs> right? So that's it. Yeah. Uh, can I ask, um, what was your inspiration for Berger, or like, Where'd you, how'd you come up with such a character like that? Well, I didn't. Yeah, well, uh, like Jim your version Cena. of her. Yeah. Um, and, and she was always, there was always an ambiguity about her. Uh -huh. Good guy or bad guy. But the, the whole ambiguity in Traitor, that was, again, that was the desperation move. Because that, that, that was actually the, the way that hit on me, that struck me as uh, 
what would make it the most interesting book to write. That's all it was. So, yes. To expand on that, when you took Trader, did, at the time, did they have the next, basically the last set of books where J Jason's turns to the dark side and you have all this stuff going on and he ends up dying? So, or am I getting... He, that was a red copy. Yeah, that's right. That's that's a later that is a later interpolation. Right, that happened after I. Well, that's what I'm saying. That was the that next series. I right. like the, my brain. That was the next series. Yeah. So with you doing Trader, they took some of what you probably put in. Did they ask you about any of that, or they put it in? No. To, okay. <laughs> it's, it's not my stuff. The stuff that I do for Star Wars is owned by Star Wars. You know, it was it was owned by so they, licensing, and now it's owned by Disney. So they're going to do whatever they feel. Um, they can do whatever they feel. This is actually, uh, there are a couple of characters, three characters from Shadowpoint who appear in, in uh, Luke Skywalker from the Shadows of Mindful, yeah. literally just so they wouldn't kill them off during the clone. <laughs> <laughs> literally, that's why I put them in, because one of them got badly injured and like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to lose these guys. Yeah. Um, yes. uh, Jeffrey, um, I have a question. Did you like, what if everyone got the inspiration for like Anakin's like fall on the dark side and like, like him like the sort of Death Star Dragon that is sort of like his spear basically, like sort of quite logical without the problem. This, this, is a, this is a little bit of a story. Um, I, when I originally wrote that book, the dragon was not a metaphor for fear, it was a metaphor for anger. It was Anakin's rage and it was burning through the, the, the you know, the nuclear vault that enclosed its heart, you know, again, over the top imagery. Um, Luke didn't like it. He didn't like it. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't like it because he thought it suggested the, the imagery, the image of the dragon in there. He, he thought it suggested that the dark side was something, it was external force that was working with Anakin to corrupt him. And he, he wanted it to stay, he wanted the force that corrupts Anakin to be Anakin. Right? It's, it, it is. If you'll, if you'll forgive me patting myself on the back, it is almost, but well, it's almost like the line out of the trailer, you know, where Roger tells Jason, the only dark side you have to worry about is the one in your own heart. Right? He, 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 said, he said, you gotta cut that, that whole motif, and it's a motif, there's like five sequences throughout the book, and it develops and it changes, and so it was a major part of my whole, you know, this whole artistic inspiration, ambition I had for this story. Um, and they told me I had to take it out. And there was a, and I've told this story elsewhere, there was a, there was a large screening match between me and several lawyers and, you know, uh, editors. Um, but the, uh, the upshot of it was that the next morning I woke up with a tremendous hangover and, uh, <laughs> and this, this idea about stars burning. And so, I, so instead of the dragon being the symbol of, of Anakin's rage, it is the symbol of his dread, mm -hmm. right? Because it's because that's what it is. That's that that in in Star Wars, almost I, I don't think it's ever stated specifically, but it's, you can see it everywhere. Um, it's fear. It's always fear is what drives the dark side because the dark side is about control, and it's fear. It, people who are not fearful don't need control. Right? So, so it was, yeah, it was, that was a, a fortunate, uh, a fortunate editorial choice on his part, because I really like that, as it stands now, better than I did in the first place. Are we done? Fine. Fine. Uh, yes. So, in terms of authors going back and revisiting their works, you know, a year later, and how you feel about it, and have you listened to Jonathan Davis's performance of Revenge of the Sith? Yes. It's brilliant. brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> that is the greatest audio book I have ever heard. Absolutely. Uh, his, his, his performances are spot on. Uh, but also, just the, you know, they, they have sound effects. There's, they, they have music. They got the, they got the score from the, the friggin' movie under the underlying <laughs> words. It's, it's very thrilling. I still have you know, five or six of them. Uh, I'm giving most of them away. Very, very glad to hear you say that. Because uh, I, I recommend that multiple times a week to people. <laughs> I mean, the book in general, but the audiobook, I said, the, the audio book is so good, and it's on a bridge. Yeah. 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 It's, it's amazing. 
Yes, in back. This is for my son. Oh, okay. okay. Um, my question was, and it's something you only kind of touched on recently, Luke Skywalker in the Shadows of Mendor. Uh -huh. um, what was it like doing that whole book with like the whole deeper darkness and the weird dualities and whatnot? And this is kind of a sec secondary question. Uh, would you add more Lando? <laughs> <laughs> I love Lando. Well, see, I, I, one of the things I like best about that book is I set it up specifically so to give sort of myself the psychological freedom to kind of go kind of nuts to the wind, sort of Brian Daly kind of thing. You know, right. Flying yeah. volcano yeah. and you know, destroying whole solar systems. And, and uh, but, but one of the upshots of that is that I got to write uh, these iconic characters. I mean, it started with Wes and Holly. Right, Jansen and Jansen. Yeah, Lee. yeah, Wes um, I, I get to write all of these guys that have been written by people that I really admire, and I got to have some fun with them because because doing it in that kind of metafictional way let me take all the dark stuff and go, yeah, it's just part of the story. Right now, it's worth saying that that I, when I wrote that book, I was actually struggling with extremely dark period in my life and I was suffering, I was feeling exactly what I described Luke is feeling. And the solution that I had for Luke was the one I decided on for myself. That's the way I got through it. So yeah, so in, in that sense, yeah, there's some autobiography in there. But uh, but the rest of it was just, you know, I just want I just I, I just wanted people to not put it down. We we couldn't. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it, it was beautiful that, that Luke kind of found a light in all that darkness, yes. in all when that you, empty you, shadow, and then he can't find the light. Thing. If you can't find the light, you can be the light. Sure. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, for, fortunately, in my case, I found one, but that it took a long time. Uh, last, last, what, last question, or maybe last two? Yeah. Uh, so I know you talked about wanting to write kind of a like retirement big send off for for uh, Bond, Luke, and Leia. Yeah, that was yours. Yeah. <laughs> do you did you uh, do you have anything like more specific planned about no. about that? No, 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 no. absolutely, absolutely. The only the only reason I wanted to do that um, was because I I thought it would be cool to be the the author of Luke Skywalker's last. Oh, sure. uh, that, that would be something that I would I would be still smile about on my deathbed, <laughs> and and that was I mean that, and that was the whole thing. It was just I just thought it would be cool. Oh, sure. <laughs> Save the galaxy one last time, check out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I let it walk with half the other half. Yeah. Okay, it didn't work out. That <laughs>